he, he asked me to do this talk about uh, acute vessel closures um, and the case. Uh, I put together a few cases just discussing kind of the general paradigm of these uh, and the treatment options. So, uh, you know, access site complications are very common. We see a wide range of them, but they can mostly be broken down into pseudoaneurysm, AV fistula, uh, closure device complications, and dissection uh, with uh, thrombosis. Uh, the treatment options are varied, uh, and they're expanding every single day uh, as we move forward. But, you know, uh, this is the endovascular summit, so we'd be remiss to not mention, you know, mechanical thrombectomy, pharmacomechanical uh, angioplasty, with or without stent. And these are generally uh, things that we have to consider. Is there an ease of repair? Where are we? Are we in the cath lab? Are we in the OR? Um, do we have contralateral access? Um, uh, we have to think about the prognosis of the patient. Is the, these patients... Uh, high risk for open procedures? Uh, do they have a, a short-term uh, 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 life expectancy? Uh, and then there's always open repair, which you know the basic tenet of this talk is we can fall, always fall back on open repair. And even though this is the endovascular summit, access site complications, I think we'll always fall back on open repair uh, as our bailout, where we have open thrombectomy, you know, uh, cut downs to tack down the plaque with patch angioplasty, um, and uh, as a final option, bypass or interposition. So access site complications can be due to a lot of things. Uh, the title of this talk was uh, vessel closure. So this is a patient who had thrombin injected into a pseudoaneurysm, and the thrombin uh, went into the native system uh, and uh, closed off uh, every single vessel below the leg. Uh, we cut down immediately uh, and did a, a fluoroscopic guided uh, thrombectomy with a Fogarty down all the vessels through a, through a one groin cut down. These groin cut downs can be done uh, with you know, sedation uh, and local anesthesia if needed. Um, and using fluoroscopic guided thrombectomy with wires, uh, kind of a hybrid approach, uh, you're able to avoid a popliteal cut down. Now, closure devices, I don't think we talked about them that much, but we've seen them throughout. We've just discussed the angio seal uh, during the case two before. So each closure device is associated with its own failures and potentials, and we have to think that the benefit of being able to close the vessel early and get, move on to the next patient will al also comes with some drawbacks that we have to be aware of. I recommend that when if someone uses one clo uh, one closure device, they stick to that closure device uh, because when you start trading off between uh, different ones and trying new ones, that's when you see complications. Uh, these complications include dissection and thrombosis, failure of the device, and distal embolization. Um, this is a patient who had an access site uh, injury from angioseal. The foot plate was uh, causing a dissection. And you could see in the first image there, there's a uh, clot, which is going to be a common theme. These, um, these, uh, these closure devices will often cause dissections in very diseased vessels, and then there'll be clot distal to them. So, you know, in the last case before, uh, we saw this patient who had that iliac dissection uh, uh, and thrombus that was treated with a cover stent graft. Uh, we mentioned open repair for that. You, for that pace, case, you could have done a hybrid repair, cut down on the artery and clamped distally and then deployed your cover stent graft. So that when you released, uh, when you um, took out your sheath, you could have seen the, the thrombus held up in the common terminal artery and done a localized thrombectomy. Uh, so this patient was repaired with cut down and patch angioplasty. And the case, uh, Happened about four months ago as a transfer from an outside hospital. 60 year old male who had a PCI uh, via the right groin one week prior. Uh, closure device was used, it was angioseal. And he presented with uh, extreme right lower extremity rest pain that was worsening. Uh, CTA at the time, it's at the outside hospital, so he wasn't available, but I saw the images uh, through um, uh, one of the residents sending it, uh, revealed complete occlusion of the popliteal artery. Uh, so, you know, in this setting, a week later, it's unexpected to, to be caused by a closure, uh, and, uh, a closure device. Um, so we treat this like an acute limb, start the patient on a therapeutic uh, heparin with a bolus. And with these worsening symptoms, uh, we were worried. So we brought the patient to the operating room and did a baloney popliteal artery cut down with proximal distal control. We expected to see fresh clot. You know, this is a, a vascular path with uh, coronary disease. Maybe he had some element of AFib and threw a clot down, which is not unexpected. But uh, after the proximal distal control is obtained, we palpate on the vessel. Instead of feeling the soft, uh, normal vessel with just a fresh clot in there, there was something of like plastic feeling inside. So instead of doing a, you know, a transverse arteriotomy, which is typically what we do to direct a Fogarty catheter down the tibials, did a longitudinal arteriotomy and saw 
an angio seal lodged into the popliteal vessel. Now these closure devices, when they get sent down into these vessels, they damage the intima. Um, so, so endovascular means really don't work. Uh, you have to cut down, repair the vessel, tack down the plaque, which is what we did. You could also have uh, access, complica access site complications at the actual access site and not embolize down. This is a perclose um, uh, foot, foot plate dissection in the common femoral artery. Uh, which caused again dissection thrombosis so in the second picture you see that dissection flap which is right there and immediately um, superior to that you see the clot uh, so this is treated with uh, thrombectomy of the common femoral artery uh, sfa profunda and patch angioplasty um, usually uh, you, if these patients uh, you know the patients that are highest risk have severe disease in the common femoral artery so ultrasound guided access is important to obtain it and careful wire navigation and perclose uh, placement is important. But when you do deal with it and deal, deal with the complications of it, cut down is required and you have to take all that plaque out. Otherwise, you're closing on a disease vessel and it'll probably close off with these uh, raw surfaces that we're going to aggregate thrombin. Uh, perclose can also cause other injuries. This is a case where uh, the perclose uh, suture actually pulled uh, some of the intima and closed off the vessel temporarily. So these are a little bit different where it, this was just treated with balloon angioplasty. So we're moving on to, you know, when can you treat open? When can you treat endo? So this patient with simple balloon angioplasty, we were able to tack down a plaque kind of like we would see in a normal dissection and prolonged low pressure uh, angioplasty open up the vessel to a normal, uh, to a normal uh, size. Uh, this is uh, an, another uh, patient, and we talked about prognosis of the patient, life expectancy, 87-year-old patient, poor overall life expectancy, multiple comorbidities. The access was actually done at the bifurcation of the SFA and Profunda, uh, which led to, again, dissection and thrombosis. So the central tenants, if you're going to treat this endovascularly, is getting contralateral access, which we did, uh, and showed there was no flow down either of these vessels. Because of the patient's comorbidities, we... We uh, put wire down the profunda and the common femoral artery and stented both with uh, almost kissing stents. Um, then, you know, the other uh, options are, uh, the other things can happen in pseudoaneurysm with a fistula. Again, 90-year-old patient, poor prognosis. Instead of cutting down and repairing primarily this AV fistula and the pseudoaneurysm, uh, we got contralateral access and stented with an atrium stent, a covered stent across the pseudoaneurysm. So if concern exists about a flap dissection of stenosis, I think uh, something we could always fall back on is open repair, usually with thromboendorectomy and patch angioplasty. And it's important to tack up the plaque. If you're not able to tack up the plaque, you may have to do a hybrid procedure uh, where you get contralateral access and stents um, to tack down the plaque. And you could always use the bypass as a bailout. Endovascular options are available and indications are expanding. It's especially useful in high-risk patients. Uh, you're also able to utilize lytic therapy, which cut downs, it's, you know, you're a little bit more dicey and a little bit more concerned when you're using lytics after a cut down. And you could always use stents as bailouts. In conclusion, at the end of every case, uh, like we did, you want to evaluate the distal arteries, either through angiogram or basic physical exam and palpation. Uh, after these acute vessel closures uh, and revascularization, you want a consideration for the muscle compartment tension, and maybe you want to do a fasciotomy. Uh, the goal is when you cause this problem, like uh, I think Dr. Rao says, you want to make sure that you rest restore the patient back to the baseline and improve function. You don't want to take a clotic end and push them into being a rest pain or tissue loss. Uh, and then also you want to consider using anticoagulation in the short term. This is the injury you caused, and there's going to be uh, a lot of raw surfaces there, exposed media, which is going to aggregate thrombin and could be a high risk for uh, thrombosis later on. So either do antiplatelet or anticoagulation. Thank you. Just a question. Uh, you uh, you use the eye cast stent in the common femoral. I mean, are you worried about crush or um, I mean, uh, or or do you think uh, it was a, you know it was a non ambulatory patient who is who is um, you know uh, really short uh, poor prognosis, so it was kind of just used as a bail at that point. But no, no. And 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 I was wondering when you size those stents. Uh, for these type of, you know, like a bailout situation. I mean, do you, I, I mean, in any particular way you size them? Ideally, we would always IVIS. I, I think that, uh, you know, IVIS should be kind of like ultrasound is for access. Uh, we should be using it uh, uh, for every single case, for every stenosis, for every occlusion. Uh, but, you know, honestly, I don't. I, I, I wall it a lot, and I'm hoping that in the next 10 years it just becomes so common, so easy. I think the angio seal uh, thing was, I think that's a great point.
that you just completely ask for. You don't even try end endovascular. You just send them for a cut down. Yeah, you, if you try to do something endovascular in those thing. cases, you're going to end up tearing the vessel right. and, like we said before, kicking the can down the road. I think that's a great point. Yeah. Thank you. Um, from an algorithm standpoint, when you're a new, you know, um, interventionalist at a practice, you know, the Impella guys and the Taver guys call you. When they've closed, they take a up and over picture for either of those, maybe a transfer. Who knows who put this impeller in? You take a picture after the per close, you know, or the pre close, you close it. It looks funny, you know. Um, maybe a small dissection, maybe a little bit of stenosis, algorithm wise. Okay, well, we'll see if this patient has claudication down the road. Some people say leave it, we'll bring it back. Some people say balloon it. You don't want to get into the habit of stenting CFA and you never know what's going on with the patient. But now we've seen some cases where patient going to come back with ALI, maybe, or thrombosis. How do you navigate? You know, people calling you. This is not your case. But people yeah. calling you, they are not comfortable peripherally. They are calling you. How do you navigate? Okay, let me do something. Let's circle back, see how the patient does. Well, you know, I think the, the most important tenet of that is that we're all in this together. So, you know, we have a really good relationship, uh, you know, between all the departments at Mount Sinai. So there's no shame. These things happen. Access to complications are a part of closure devices. So having just this multidisciplinary technique of evaluation, having vascular surgery, I see and IR work together helps a lot of the time. So you call vascular, well, you, you're a vascular surgeon? Yeah. Yeah. So I would call I mean, me Dr. Han. Okay. So, you know, <laughs> and, and, you know, this also goes for the interventional cardiologist. Am I calling my vascular surgeon to take a look at this, or I'm just talking to my senior partner and then we're deciding together what to do with this. You know, I think that if it's in the external iliac artery, these dissections uh, or common uh, uh, or common iliac artery, uh, stenting by an interventionalist is fine, and it's really it's a really good option, which has expanded, um, you know, as opposed to 20 years ago. But when you get into the common femoral artery uh, and there's dissections and thrombosis, it's going to close off. You know. Thank you. Great, thank you.